A fun thing you can do with 3D text is to first distort the text and then convert it to 3D and then split the text into individual characters where you can work on them one at a time. To see how that's done, open up Photoshop. All right, let's make a new document. Go File, New, click OK. Let's add some text here. Click the Type tool, type in something. I'll type in Distort. There we are. Set it up. Now I'm not going to convert that to 3D just yet. What I want to do is convert it into a path or a collection of paths. And to do that, I need to first select it. So I go down to the type layer here and Control or Command click on the letter T and that puts a selection around all the letters. And now I want to convert that to a path. To do that, I need to have the paths panel visible. Right now it's not here. So I'm going to go up to Window, Paths, and now it'll show up down here. I'm going to click on this little guy down here. That is Convert the Selection to a Path. Now we have a work path around the text. Let's go back to the Layers panel, turn it off. The paths will still be there. And now I want to distort those paths. So I'm going to zoom in a bit here by pressing Ctrl or Command Plus a couple of times. There we go. And now I want to select the points in those paths individually. So to do that, I go down here to this little tool here. There's a Path Selection tool and a Direct Selection tool. If you don't know how these guys work, you click on the Path Selection tool, it selects the entire path around like that. If you hold on the control or the command key, then it turns into the, the direct selection tool. In any event, now that it's the direct selection tool, we've got these guys selected individually, and I want to distort these letters. Now, the object here is to distort them without having them intersect, because if they intersect, they'll become one object rather than two, for example. And I don't want what will become an internal constraint to cross over here. So I'm going to take this guy down, put it a little bit like that. Maybe pull this guy up a bit like so. Click over here to select those guys and pull it down to whatever you want, just to kind of mess with the letters a little bit. Obviously do some strangeness to them. There we go. And I'm gonna do a few of these things here just to really kind of mess with these letters. But again, I'm avoiding crossing any lines here just to make sure we don't bump into each other. If you feel like you're gonna bump into another letter, all you need to do is select the entire letter using the selection tool back here, using the path selection tool like that. So you want to move this one over there. You've got the whole thing selected. You can move it out of the way. It's okay. You can move any of these guys anywhere you want because you're going to move them later anyways. So this is one way to avoid having them bump into each other like that. You move this one and then this one so you don't lose the fact that they're one object with an internal constraint. Stuff like that. Let's go back, hold on the controller command key and click on these guys and then do some more distorting here just to mess with these things for a little while. And then we're going to get down and do some business here. Pull that guy up a little bit, pull you out like so, and bring you up like that, pull you out like that, pull you down like that. And I think the R deserves a little bit more distorting, don't you? Let me just make sure they don't touch by switching over to the path selection tool and moving that guy a little bit to the right there. Now they're all distorted, and you could obviously distort them more if you like, but this is the general process. And now we convert this work path into 3D. It's very simple, right? Go to the 3D panel, and instead of selected layers, go down to Work Path, 3D Extrusion, Create. And lo and behold, there we go. What we have here is one mesh, as you might expect. Looking on that, it'll behave as one thing, like so. If you look at it over here, you'll see it's one mesh. But let's change that, shall we? Got the layer selected, go up to 3D, and split the extrusion. We get this message, you're going to lose the animation, that's okay. And now it's split up. We have a new group here. Open that up. Got distort one, two, three, etc., all the way down the line here. Let's see, distort one probably is D. Distort two is I. Look at that, it's going in order. Sometimes it doesn't, but here it is. Three is the dot to the I. Let's take a look at the distort five. I'm thinking that might be the O. Maybe it's six. There we go. Let's look down a little bit. Notice it has an internal constraint. The O has an internal constraint. That worked. Good. That's good to know. Let's just see how these guys behave independently. I'll click on this first one. Let's kind of zoom out a bit so I can see it better. Click on it. And we can have that go up, down, whatever, independently of everybody else. We can pull it forward even, like so, and pull it in front of the other ones. Let's see how the shadow goes across there like that. Pretty cool. We want to change the color of that first one. Let's go on up a little ways here so we can select the front inflation like so. Change the color to our sort of de facto red. As simple as that. Let's click on this one over here, select the internal constraint. And instead of being a hole, let's make it active. And now that it's active, it looks like nothing's happening. But let's do some beveling on that one. So I'll select that one to make it active. Go to cap and let's bevel it, shall we? Like so. Or let's do a little bit of inflation. 
kind of make a little bit of a pillow out of it like so. So there you go. That's how you can take text, distort the heck out of it, convert it to 3D, and then split the extrusion so you can work on each character individually.